Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 3, Lesson 4, Landscape Materials and Scene Lighting. In this lesson, we're going to explain landscape materials, we're going to demonstrate creating a landscape material in Unreal Engine, we'll explain scene lighting, and then we'll demonstrate the use of scene lighting actors in our level. A landscape material uses layers to define multiple materials that can blend on a landscape. Landscape materials allow the user to create realistic transition between materials on a landscape. For instance, a transition between sand or rock to something like grass or gravel. This allows you to create very realistic and immersive levels. Here's the level that I worked on, and I spent a little bit of time sculpting my landscape, and we will continue to develop this level over the next few lessons, so I don't want you to spend too much time on it right now. And when we create our landscape, you'll notice it has this checkerboard pattern on it. Now we could just create a new material that looked like grass or rock or gravel and drag it directly onto the landscape, but that's just gonna create one continuous material. We want it to look kind of realistic. For instance, these hills maybe would have like a rocky texture. The ground would maybe have like a grassy or gravel texture or a mixture of those things. So let's go here and we'll create a new material. And we're gonna call this M underscore landscape. Let's open this up. And on this material, we're gonna need a way to blend between the different layers. So if you right click and type landscape, you'll see that there's a landscape layer blend. Let's click this and we'll drag it into base color for now. Now over here, we can assign multiple layers. So let's create a layer and open this up. And here we'll name, we'll create a name for it. Let's start with rock. We can create another layer and we can call this one grass. And then maybe there's one more layer called gravel. So now we're set up to have three different layers on our landscape material. We'll need some textures that we can use to match these three different layers. One website I like to use a lot is ambientcg.com. There's a lot of free assets on here to use. And we can see under the license that these all have CC0 licenses available. So you can use them in your project without needing a license. Let's find a rock. And you could choose any one of these. I like the look of this one, Rock 049. Over here, we want to select one of the download files. And you can see a lot of these go up to 8K textures. These can be really large texture files. So I only recommend creating these really large ones if you want a very hyper-realistic game. 2K or 4K should be plenty fine. And I'll stick with 2K for my project. Click the zip and you'll download it. We also need a grass, and for that I've chose grass 004, and a gravel, and for that I chose gravel 035. Now again, you don't have to select these ones. These are just the ones I'm using in my project if you're interested. And you'll notice that these come with a lot of extra textures that we don't necessarily need. The ones that we're gonna be using are the color, the normals, and the roughness. So make sure when we're importing these, these are the only ones you need. And here we can see in my textures, I now have my rock, I have my three textures there, I have my grass, and I have my gravel. Back in our landscape material, let's right click and we'll type texture sample. And for this, let's start by doing the rock one, rock color, and drag that into color. And we'll duplicate this for the grass and the gravel. And remember, these should be the ones labeled color. And we can grab all of this and duplicate it and drag it into the roughness channel and change these to the roughness and then duplicate it again. And for these, we'll use the normals. So we'll drag this into normal and we'll select the normal for each one. 
Let's hit apply and save. And let's go back to our scene. And here in landscape mode, we can see with our landscape selected, there's a spot here where we can select landscape material. And now we'll see over here, we have our three layers showing up. We need to create a new layer for each of these. So next to this, let's select this create layer info, weight blended layer, and then find a place to save it. And do the same for the other two. And one thing you may notice is that now everything's very shiny. This is because sometimes the roughness value may be confused with a smoothness value, which is used in other programs. If it looks like this, one thing you can try is from your roughness, you can drag off and type minus to get a subtract and plug that into your roughness and put your blend into the bottom pin and make sure that the top one is set to one. This will basically reverse whatever that value is and we can see now that it's not shiny anymore. And now that we have our three layers set up, what we can do is we could start painting onto the landscape. So I'm gonna start by making my brush a little bit smaller. And whatever the top one is, is gonna set it as the default layer. And we can go down here and we can start painting in some grass. And some gravel. If we go into our scene, we can see that the gravel looks pretty realistic and the rocks look good. I'd like you to pause the video and take a few minutes experimenting with the different painting brushes on your landscape. Now that we've learned the basics of creating a landscape, sculpting it and painting it, let's talk about another important aspect of creating the ambience of our scene and that's lighting. Getting good lighting in a scene really helps set the mood for your scene. And Unreal Engine has a lot of tools built into it to create realistic lighting environments in your level. There's a directional light, which simulates sunlight, a sky atmosphere, which creates a realistic atmosphere, and it takes an input from the directional light to do this. There's a skylight, which captures distant parts of the world and applies them to the scene as light. And there are also some extra tools available to us to help really set the atmosphere for our world. There are fog tools, including exponential height fog, atmospheric fog, and volumetric fog. And then Unreal Engine also has a volumetric cloud system built in that renders realistic clouds to your atmosphere. Now, you may also see some older tutorials that talk about a sky sphere. This was replaced by the sky atmosphere system in Unreal Engine 5. And what it was, was it would literally create a sphere around your world that would create the atmosphere for the world. Let's do a quick demonstration of some of these actors in our level. And before we get started, I just want to point out very quickly that I like to keep everything really tidy in my outliner. So I often will create folders and subfolders to keep all of my assets organized. By default, the lighting in our blank level is put into a folder for us called lighting. And we can see all of those here. But as an extra step, I created a folder called house. And this is where I'll keep everything related to the house. And you can see I have all of these components in there that make up the house. If you want to create a new folder, it's as easy as just right clicking and saying create folder. And then you can just drag assets into the folders to keep them tidy. Let's start with a directional light. We can see that there's one here in my scene. And if I get very close, you can see that there's this arrow pointing out from it. This arrow indicates the direction of the light. And if you notice, it corresponds with the shadows that are being cast by the sun. An interesting thing about lighting and the way it works in Unreal Engine is having a directional light and a sky atmosphere, they'll work together. And if I change the angle of my sun, we can create things that look like sunrises, sunsets, or even dusk. Eventually for this scene, we're gonna to wanna to make things very dark. But once we do that, it's gonna make it very hard to see in our world. And I'll show this now. If I put the sun at 90 degrees, you'll notice that it's pointing directly up. 
which means in the world this would be essentially midnight. And you can see now that I can't see anything in my world. Up here we can go to where it says lit, and we can select unlit, and this just removes the lighting from our scene so that we can still see everything and navigate. This is one way you could use to build out the level for the rest of your game. I also am eventually going to want my sun to be over these mountains in the distance. So I'm going to change the angle of my sun so that it's right over those mountains. In the directional light, you can also change some of the settings about how much light it casts. For instance, we can put it down to one and the light will be drastically reduced. You'll notice also when I change the light setting, after a while, the lighting will slowly change over time. This is because there's something called auto exposure built into Unreal Engine. And the purpose of this is to mimic the way our eyes adjust to light in the world. You can disable this if you like by going to project settings and typing exposure. And you'll see it here under the rendering settings. We can disable it. And then when we go back to our scene, the lighting will be more consistent. I want my scene to be very dark with just a small hint of the sun coming up over the horizon. Next, let's talk about the sky atmosphere. As we said, the sky atmosphere is using the sunlight to create a realistic atmosphere. There are a lot of settings that we can adjust on the sky atmosphere, and you can definitely take some time and experiment with them. I also recommend reading the Unreal Engine documentation on sky atmosphere. There's a lot of information in here about how the settings work to create a realistic atmosphere in your level. The sky light takes into account the light and atmosphere and creates additional lighting in the scene. We can see this effect by turning it off in our scene and we'll notice that the shadows get much darker. What the sky light is doing is creating bouncing light within our scene so that the shadows aren't as harsh. If you see very harsh shadows in your scene, you may just need to add a skylight or make some adjustments to the skylight that is in your scene. The Unreal documentation has a lot of information about skylights, so you can read up on this or just experiment in your level with what the settings do until you find something that you like. The exponential height fog can also be used to create realistic fog in your world. The first thing we can do is increase the fog density. And you'll notice immediately, it starts to look like there's a distant fog. We can adjust our lighting again, and we're starting to get a very hazy, dark, creepy world. I definitely recommend experimenting with all of these actors that are pre-built into the world. And if you're not sure exactly how something works, definitely go to the Unreal Engine documentation and read up on it a little more. There are also a lot of great tutorials about lighting on YouTube. I personally recommend William Foucher's channel for lighting. He has a lot of great tutorials on how to set up lighting in your scenes to get the effects that you might want. So I recommend at this time, you take a few minutes to get the ambience for your level set up. Remember, we're making a survival horror game here. So dark, low visibility is the perfect environment. In the next lesson, we're gonna start building out our scene a little bit more with some additional actors. So once you get the landscape and lighting looking the way you want it, I'll see you in the next lesson.